I'm a brain doctor. I want everybody to wear their helmets. Do you wear helmets when you ski? No. No? Why not? Because you've never skied. Okay. No, because you've never skied. Oh, yeah. Snow and Jacob wear helmets when they ski. Yeah. But you do when you ice <laughs> so the so machine doesn't touch you in any way. You nope. just slide right in on the bed and slide right out. Yeah, it's kind of like going in and out of a spaceship. So we take pictures of the brains, but do you know that you take pictures of any other part of the body too? So the heart doctors take pictures of the heart. Uh, they take pictures of the other organs, your tummy, and figure out how food goes through your tummy. And some doctors take pictures of all your muscles to see if there's any problem with your muscles. And then one group of our doctors takes pictures of babies before they're born. So we can take a really fancy picture of a baby before they're born to see whether or not they might need a little help when they're born, or sometimes now doctors can even do surgery before the baby's born to fix things so that the baby's born healthy. And we do a lot of that work on the MRI scan. And do you know what else they scan sometimes? Not on this scanner, but on one of our other scanners? Gorillas, mm -hmm. uh, chimpanzees, mummies. So we have a whole research program on animal research, and there's a magnet that is used for animals that's separate from the magnet usually used for people. And there's research done on ancient mummies, and so they have scanned the ancient mummies from the museum here to look to see what's different in the brains from people that lived thousands of years ago, or the heart of people that lived thousands of years ago, and, the, and now. Isn't that cool? And sometimes they use the MRI because they can't unwrap a mummy, right? If you took all that wrapping off, you would destroy it. So they use the scanner to find out who's in there and what they looked like. Um, and when they even can take the pictures from the MRI and put it back together again and get a pretty good idea of what the person probably looked like when they were alive. Hmm. Isn't that cool? What is this for? That's for washing your hands. <laughs> <laughs> Just a big sink. How many MRIs do you guys have? We have a, a research scanner here. We have now three clinical scanners. Mm -hmm. And we have what's called a functional MRI. Mm -hmm. So functional MRI is a little bit different. It takes a picture of the brain at the same time as the doctor asks you to do something. Okay. So if you're tapping your finger, it'll take a look at the part of the brain that controls the movement of your hand. Or if you're looking at a visual uh, image, it'll, look, it'll record from the back of the brain that controls your vision. Uh, so we have functional MRI, and then we have an MEG, uh, which is an MRI that's linked to the electrical messages of the brain. So that we can, particularly for kids who have seizures. Do you guys know what a seizure is? So a seizure is like an electrical storm in your brain, and it makes the person have funny twitching movements, and they can't really, they're not very aware when that happens. So we have a fancy MRI with that, too. How many children every year are affected by brain injuries because they don't wear a helmet? Oh, I'm not necessarily sure I know the exact number of that. It's, uh, it's still the number one cause of serious brain injury in kids is trauma. Not all bicycles, though. That includes motor vehicle accidents, uh, falls, uh, sports-related injury, um, and hockey. Um, so if you take all of that, uh, traumatic brain injury is still the number one cause of neurological disorder. But the exact number in Canada, I don't know. And that includes skiing in the snow, right? <laughs> it does, although fortunately not very often. Because uh, wearing helmets now is pretty mandatory at most of the hills. Uh, and that makes a huge difference. Uh, the helmets really do work. Are you getting tired? Yeah, we 